welcome back to Guitar Science. Or should I say, Bass Science. Yes, today, we're gonna look at big guitar, as a certain other YouTuber likes to say. Bass. So, why talk about bass? Well, the short answer is because bass is awesome. I love playing bass. Sometimes I actually prefer to play bass, but don't tell anyone. So I think it's fun to play. It also sounds good. Bass just sounds good. There's something about the thicker strings, the longer scale length, uh, the lower fundamental frequency that I think creates more harmonic content. So I don't entirely know what I'm talking about here, but I believe that that combination of factors is gonna give you more overtones in the sound and it's gonna make the bass sound richer. Uh, you know, even if you're playing up the neck, it's just everything sounds better when you play it on a bass. Ironically enough, I got this in Guitar Center when I sold a Gretsch hollow body guitar that I didn't like. And I walked into the bass room and I played every bass in my price range. And this is the only one that I wanted to buy. It's got too many humbuckers, your standard three-way toggle switch. Um, might be a mahogany body, although it's kind of hard for me to tell, but it sort of has that faded cherry SG vibe to it. Um, and I love the fact that it basically looks like a Les Paul. I believe the fingerboard is rosewood, although ebony is also common, and the neck shaft wood is maple, and it's a very pretty piece of maple at that, although there is an obvious scarf joint up there. And yes, it's made in China, but my answer to that is, if you cover that up and you like how it plays, who cares where it's made? <laughs> it actually is sold with a pick guard, which I thought was kind of funny because, you know, generally you don't use a pick when you play bass. But why don't more guitar players play bass? What's, what's the deal? If it's so great and so awesome, why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think the number one reason is because it's hard. Uh, it's harder to push down on the strings. You know, a lot of times when you're playing bass and you're not really adept at playing bass, uh, you get, let's see if I can do it. One of these. Ugh. Right? Nobody wants that sound. Um, we spend all day setting up our guitars to never have that sound. So, yeah, that's a big deterrent for a lot of people. Um, also, you know, since the scale length is bigger, uh, there's more space between all the frets. So, you know, take a classic riff like uh, Money by Pink Floyd, right? When you play it on bass, now your fingers are a lot further apart, and all of a sudden, it's a lot harder to play all those things that you have to play in that riff. And all of a sudden, a super easy riff just became mildly difficult. Um, and so if you're coming from guitar and you're trying to play the same sort of stuff, all of a sudden it's like, damn, this is hard. So I think that deters a lot of guitar players from playing bass, uh, which stinks because bass is awesome. So uh, right now, we're just going into the Katana Mark II. Um, it's pretty clean sound-wise, and you're just hearing what it sounds like in the room, which is probably crap, but so be it. Uh, so the bass itself sounds pretty good. So we're on the middle setting, you know, both pickups. Uh, the rhythm, or the neck pickup setting, it's a little less trebly as you might expect. Still sounds good though. bass, uh, well the whole thing is a bass, on the bridge pickup rather, everything's a little more trebly. Uh, you get that really bright trebly bass sound that instantly makes me think of this. Which actually was not played on a bass. There is a special thing about this bass. So most basses are 34 inch scale or even longer than that. This bass, however, is only 30 inch scale, which means it is substantially easier to play than your standard bass. So 
Think about the difference between a Strat and a Les Paul. 25 and a half inches versus 24 and three quarters. Big difference in playability and feel, and some might argue sound. Well, this is four inches different than a regular bass. So there's a big, big difference in terms of playability. Um, I think you already heard a little bit of that by accident when I kind of did some bending and vibrato. Uh, on your typical bass, you know, you, you don't do a lot of vibrato unless you're pretty good at bass because it's hard. But on this one, you can bend and do vibrato with these. You can do whole step bends if you want. So everything, everything is easy to play. Uh, I stink at bass, so I still sound like crap when I play fast. But if you're good at bass, um, you can play pretty quick. And it's really enjoyable, and it doesn't it doesn't fight you at all uh, in the way that when you pick up a lot of bass guitars as a standard guitar player, you feel like the instrument's fighting you. This doesn't feel that way. So if you're one of those people who said, "Ah, oh, gee, I would play bass, but like you know that," and it's like hard to play and stuff, um, I would encourage you to pick up a short scale bass. Short scale bass has exploded in popularity in recent years. You can get 30, you can get 32, um, and now most big manufacturers make at least one short scale bass. So uh, you can check them all out if you want to, but I highly recommend short scale bass. Uh, buying this bass kind of got me to play regularly, whereas before, I would only play if I needed to record a bass part because, well, frankly, it was kind of hard to play. So that's just a little bit about bass, short scale bass, and why I like it.